Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law. For today's case, we have a situation where the city of Toledo had some water that was not drinkable, and it was potentially the fault of a particular farming enterprise. So the city of Toledo passed a rule dealing with this issue, trying to regulate it, and the company is suing. This is Drew's Farm Partnership from and the state of Ohio, also the city of Toledo. So in this case, we're going to review this, this rule the city of Toledo tried to apply and whether or not it can be applied to the people they were trying to regulate in this situation. So let's get started with this. In August 2014, the city of Toledo officials issued a warning to residents, don't drink the water. The city's water supply contained unsafe levels of a toxic substance and pollution in Lake Erie was the culprit. The water remained undrinkable for nearly three days. In response, Toledo residents began a multi-year campaign to add a Lake Erie Bill of Rights. The Lake Erie Bill of Rights, referred to by the acronym LIBOR, so okay, won about 60% of the votes and so it became part of the charter. Plaintiffs Drew Farm Partnership, which grows crops in four counties near Toledo, initiated the lawsuit the day after the election. Both courts asked this court to declare LIBOR invalid under the federal rules. With argument with with agreement from both sides, this court issues a preliminary injunction last year. The injunction prevented the enforcement of LIBOR until this lawsuit ends and this court heard oral argument. LIBOR declares that Lake Erie and Lake Erie Watershed pose the rights to possess the right to exist, flourish, and naturally evolve. Accord additionally, the Charter Amendment grants Toledo residents the right to a clean and healthy environment. Under LIBOR, Toledians also possess both a collective and individual right to self-government in their community, a right of a system of government that embodies that right, and the right to a system of government that protects and secures their human, civil, and collective rights. LIBOR contains no definitions or other provisions that would meaningfully clarify these rights, although it does, does indicate that the protected wa Lake Erie watershed includes natural water features, communities of organisms, soil, as well as terrestrial and aquatic sub-ecosystems. The city of Toledo or any resident of the city may sue to enforce these rights. So basically we have something that was a citizen initiative, but it was written very, very broadly. Just like it is good that there is water that is clean, we'd like to have clean water. You know, lacking a little bit of clarity that we normally like to have in law. Okay. State law, regulations, permits, and licenses are declared invalid in Toledo to the extent they conflict with LIBOR. LIBOR also purports to supersede federal permits and licenses. Well, uh-oh, right there. You know, first of all, as I think we've covered many times, right, there is the idea of federal preemption and federal, like, supremacy of law. So, like, a state and, and a city trying to undo federal permits, good luck. And also cities are creatures of the state the state has the right to control cities to any extent they want you can't have a city regulation that is conflicting with a state regulation you know you can usually have ones that are consistent with or not like dramatically opposed but if they're opposed no not so much so you got all kinds of problems here you can't you can't do this no drew's farm and the state satisfy the injury and state requirement Libor has already injured the state, at least on paper. State law, regulations, licenses, and permits are invalid in Toledo, apparently. The state could also be sued under Libor for failing to sufficiently protect Lake Erie or for violating Libor's guarantee of local government. Drew's farm falls within Libor's crosshairs, too. The business spreads fertilizers on fields in the Lake, water, Lake Erie watershed, arguably infringing the watershed's right, the watershed's right, the right of the watershed. Okay. I didn't know watersheds could have rights. Good. To exist, flourish, and nationally evolve. Okay. And the right of Toledans to a clear and healthy environment. I see problems here. In the past, federal courts have invalidated municipal legislation on vagueness grounds. For example, a Cincinnati ordinance criminalizing gathering on sidewalks in a matter annoying to persons passing by. The Supreme Court struck it down because conduct that annoys may not annoy others. Yeah, it doesn't put you on clear enough notice as to what it is. So there you go. Libor's environmental rights are even less clear than the provisions struck down in those cases. What conduct infringes the right of Lake Erie and its watershed? These are questions that I'm not used to asking at all. What conduct infringes the right of Lake Erie and its watershed? 
Wow. To exist, flourish, and naturally evolve. How would a prosecutor, judge, or jury decide? And why does the city or its people have standing? Because if it's the watershed's rights, then only the watershed should have the right to sue. So how do the people have standing? Where, where do they get off? I don't know. Libor also offers no guidance. Similar uncertainty shrouds the right of Toledans to a clean and healthy environment. The line between clean and unclean, between healthy and unhealthy, depends on who you ask. Because of the vagueness, Drew's farm reasonably fears that spreading even small amounts of fertilizer violates the rule. Yeah, I'm, you know, it's, it's unadministrable. How are you supposed to administer this? Who's judging what and under what standard? What is, what are the rules here? What are the rules? You know, we like to have rules that we can administer. What are the rules? We don't know. Okay. The right of Toledans to self-government in their local community is impermissibly vague. At first blush, the provision seems to reiterate an article of the Ohio Constitution, which grants municipalities authority to exercise all powers of local self-government. Unlike the Ohio Constitution, however, Libor imposes a fine on any business or government that violates the right. The amount of fine is the maximum allowable under the state law for the violation, but Ohio law does not identify any law for violating a right to self-government. That's just super encouraging. We have a fine that's completely unspecified. A maximum amount that isn't allowed for by law. You know, this is one of the problems with citizen petitions and citizens' attempt to directly do government. This is one of the problems with democracy. They tend not to do it very well most of the time. They tend not to, like, think about things in the way that, like, people who do this for a living think about things. And then they run into problems when they try to administer it. You know, this is one of the things with, like, citizen-directed things. You know, as a rule, there are a lot of problems. Yeah. Additionally, the rights include the right to a system of government that protects and secures human, civil, and collective rights. But the nature of those human, civil, and collective rights is anyone's guess. Yeah. Like Libor's environmental rights, this self-government right is aspirational, not a real law. Right. It's not a rule because we can't administer it. We'd like to have rights. What rights? We're not going to tell you. Great. So one of the other questions that might be, well, if portions of this law are invalid, are there other parts that can be saved? Severability. Can we cut other parts of law apart so we don't have to kill the whole thing? Well, let's find out. Libor contains a severability clause. If any court decides that a provision of law is illegal, such decision shall not invalidate the remaining provision of law. Notwithstanding the clause, however, the unconstitutional parts of Libor are severable from the rest only if severability will not fun fundamentally disrupt the scheme as which it's a part. Yeah, fair, fair enough. You know, if we, if we want to do severability, we have to have something that's severable. We have to have something where it can still survive as a separate thing. And so, like, if you strike all the parts that are invalid and, there's not, and it can't survive by itself, then it's not severable. You, you can say it's severable, but at, at legally, but practically, you can't do it. So, okay, fair enough. No part of Libor can be saved. Very sad. Once the three vague rights are stripped away, the remainder is meaningless. The city urges the court to at least leave in place Libor's preamble. The preamble contains nothing to invalidate. So, sure, the preamble still exists but it doesn't have any meaning, so whatever. To be clear, several of other of Libor's other provisions fail on their own merits, you don't say. For example, Libor's attempt to invalidate Ohio law in the name of environmental protection is a textbook example of what a municipal government cannot do. Yep. Lake Erie is not a pond in Toledo. Okay. It is one of the five great lakes and one of the largest lakes on Earth, bordering dozens of cities four states, and two counties. That means the lake's health falls well outside the city's constitutional right to local government, which encompasses only the government and administration of the internal affairs of the municipality. Yeah, you know, I don't know where you get off trying to administer all of Lake Erie from Toledo, but, you know, other people might have an opinion about this. Blackleaf made a mispronunciation. We'll live. Consequently, municipal laws enacted to protect Lake Erie are generally void if they conflict. With careful drafting, which again is one of the problems with citizens initiatives in general, generally not carefully drafted, yeah. Toledo probably could enact valid legislation to reduce water pollution. For instance, a Madison, Wisconsin ordinance reduced the use of phosphorus containing fertilizers within city limits. Right, this, this is something that you probably could do. You probably could, within your city limits, have rules for like 
the kinds of things people can use on their farms or put into waters or or that kind of stuff. So you probably have the ability to control stuff within your city limits as long as you gave people notice as to what that is. You know, don't put a fertilizer that contains more than X parts per billion on your on your farm or don't do whatever as long as it's clear. But, you know, this is aspirational hippie language. It's like, you know, let's let's fix the earth without saying how. You know, we don't we don't really do that in law. We need something a little more specific. Thanks. The ordinance that ordinance survived a lawsuit like this one. In contrast, Libor was not so carefully drafted. Its authors ignored basic legal principles and constitutional limitations, and its invalidation should not come as a surprise. So that is the end of our coverage of Drew's Farm Partnership versus State of Ohio. In this case, we learned that the city of Toledo tried to pass a city ordinance that apparently is attempting to regulate all of Lake Erie, the entirety of it, and says that Lake Erie itself has the right to exist and other rights or something. And it was a little vague on details, left a little bit to be desired as far as law is concerned. You know, judges are like, how do I administer this? Because what am I supposed to be judging? Like, seriously, like, what are, what are the rules? Uh, would you like to, like, set in place, like, a limit on, like, parts per billion of certain chemicals? No, you just want to have really general as aspirational statements, a little hard to administer. And so that's the end of our coverage. Thank you for joining me as we both read this case together and now better understand the law. If you're enjoying this legal education content, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps us grow. And check out one of our other videos, including the one that's currently being displayed on the thumbnail on screen. Thank you so much for your continued support. And until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.